All right, so hopefully you've got a sense of how this thing is applied. Now we're going to go into kind of the nitty gritty here a little more and talk about the things you need to know in order to apply this moment distribution method. The first thing that we need to talk about is sign convention. And if you're used to drawing, you know, bending moment diagrams from your mechanics and materials book, and I think in most cases for in the U.S., uh, here, your, the sign convention that you've been using for moments is that a positive moment, internally positive moment, causes compression at the top, tension at the bottom. What you have to know for the Hardy Cross method or the moment distribution method is that the sign convention is no longer this, you know, defined by this compression at the top, tension at the bottom business here. This is at the ends of a member, a positive internal moment is clockwise. Period. That's it. Doesn't matter which, you know, it does has nothing to do with compression or tension on whatever side of the beam. The positive moment is clockwise. Don't mess this up because what happens a lot is that people will use this and then they'll go back and try to, try to draw their bending moment diagrams and be like, what? What you just have to remember is that once you figure out what the moment is at the ends of each of the members and what direction it's in, you can go to any sign convention you want. As long as you have the direction and magnitude of the moment, you're good to go. Now, the next thing that we need to know is about member stiffness. And the way that the moment distribution method works is that each segment of a beam is modeled, if you will, by a substructure. And the most common one that's used is is this as follows a beam with one end fixed and another end pinned here and if I have a concentrated moment applied at this end call this end a call this end B and by equilibrium if I work it all out by equilibrium I would get another moment over here which I will call M B A and what's more is that if I look at the deflection there would be a deflected shape due to this moment which would look like this bam and I know that I would have a rotation here and this moment at A would induce this rotation theta A if I look at this relationship what I see is here is that this M is equal to 4 E I over L times theta a and the stiffness of this member right here for this moment and this deflection is this 4 ei over l where l is the length this 4 ei over l will represent the stiffness of member a b another thing that we can figure out from this diagram here the substructure if you will is the relationship or the carryover factor from the joint to the other side where the other side is fixed here, this MBA, its relationship to this theta A is equal to 2EI over L times theta A. If I combine this equation with this equation here, I will get that this MBA is equal to 1 half M. Right here, this 1 half represents the carryover factor. And it's important to point out here that this works for when you have a joint, you're looking at a joint, and the far end is fixed. Now, if you had a case where the far end were pinned, so if I had this joint here, boom, pin and pinned, and I had this moment M applied here, my display shape might look something like this, boom, like that, call this theta A. And this relationship would be that M is equal to 3 EI over L times theta A. And now this would be my stiffness. This would be KAB in the case where my far end is pinned here. And I would have no carryover factor because there's no moment at point B right here. So the carryover factor for this case is equal to zero. All right, so we've talked about the sign convention, member stiffness, the carryover factor. Now, the last thing that we have to figure out is the distribution factor, which is really one of the things you want to figure out before the carryover factor. But, you know, the carryover factor explanation works well here because that way I don't have to draw these things twice. The distribution factor depends on the stiffness of the member and the total stiffness of that joint. Before we talk about what that equation looks like, let's take a case where I have this joint here in the middle. It is connected by a member whose far end is fixed, another member whose far end is pinned, and then another member whose far end is fixed. Let's put some letters to this. Let's call this A, 
uh, let's call this B, C, and D here. And so KAC is equal to 4EI over L, where this is length L. And then here, this is also, we'll call each of these also length L. And also this, how about we'll make this a little tricky, call this capital H for the height. What's up? Okay, this KAC is 4EI over L. This KAB, because the far end is pinned, is 3EI over L. Here, down here, for KAD, this is 4EI over H. The distribution factor is kind of the, the fraction that each member gets. So it's for distribution factor for AC, for member AC here, from joint A, is equal to KAC divided by the total stiffness at joint A. KA is equal to the sum of KAC plus KAB plus KAD. Essentially the stiffness of each member framing into that joint. And so if I you know worked out some more stuff, this would be 4EI over L, 3EI over L, plus 4EI over H. Oh, that made that dirty. So let's say H is equal to L. Then this right here would also be L. So that this would, you know, all these factors are the same. So it's 4, 7, 11. 11 EI over L. And then the distribution factor, DF for member AC is equal to 4 EI over L divided by 11 EI over L. And look at assuming all those moments of inertia and the materials are the same, those cancel out. And so the distribution factor for AC is 4 elevenths. And then I could do the same thing for member AB, which is going to be 3 elevenths. And then for member AD, DFAD, is going to be equal to 4 elevenths. And what you will always find is that the distribution factor should always add up to 1. So hopefully you got a sense now of all the different parts that are involved in the moment distribution method. Uh, don't this, you know, don't mess up the sign convention. That's really important. That's a common mistake, especially in terms of confusion really when going from the moment distribution method to like drawing the bending diagrams later on and and also the member stiffnesses you know choosing the right member stiffnesses can help get you or helped lower the number of iterations you need in the moment distribution method that you'll see later and then also we cover the distribution factor which is hopefully not too bad to calculate all right so see you next time